Welcome to the next episode of the Explain series with your host, Dr. Brett Palmer. And this week is about epididymal orchitis. Epididymal orchitis is uh, usually a bacterial infection, but sometimes it can be a viral infection. Um, and the infection usually enters um, uh, uh, the penis and then tracks backwards uh, through the prostate uh, and down uh, uh, through uh, sp the spermatocord and through the van's difference and infects the epididymis. And it is characterized by quite a lot of pain and swelling inside the scrotum. It could be on one side or it can be on both sides and it can usually be uh, quite painful. Here's a, a quick review of the anatomy. So you have uh, the large uh, testicle here and on the top you have the head of the epididymis and that comes back down into the tail of the, of the epididymis uh, and the uh, tube that comes uh, from the tail and, go, and then back up into the van's difference. That's through the spermatocord and that takes sperm uh, uh, through to the um, uh, urethra uh, via the prostate. And it's that area that gets uh, infected. So epididymal, meaning the epididymis, and orchitis is the actual uh, is the actual testicle itself, and that's epididymal orchitis. Now, uh, epidid epididymal orchitis is relatively common in around about one in every 144 outpatient visits, and it's usually it between uh, men between the ages of uh, 18 and 50. Uh, some people say, well. We can cut that down a bit further, which we can, and it's usually between 18 and 35. Um, and a lot of the time, uh, the infection is in, uh, for the younger age groups, for example, you know, the, young, the younger you are, it tends to be more of a sexually um, a, a transmitted infection that causes the epididymitis. Um, and epididymitis is also more common than orchitis itself. <clears throat> Um, in patients that are on, or slightly older, and I tend to give a cut off around about 30, to be honest with you. If you're older than 30, it's probably could very well be of another cause as well. Obviously, it could always be a sexually transmitted infection, but it could also be um, an infection that is not necessarily uh, or, uh, sexually transmitted. So it could be bacteria uh, from the skin or from the mouth. And obviously, if you engage in uh, anal sex without a condom, uh, that can also cause um, uh, epididymal orchitis as well. Uh, viral infections that cause it are things like mumps, uh, and you can also have rare infections, uh, for example, like uh, TB. Uh, what's very important, if you're watching this video thinking I've got sudden onset pain in my testicles and I'm not sure if this is ep epidemiological orchitis or not, uh, well, uh, it needs prompt medical review to make sure you don't have te testicular torsion, okay? Because if you have testicular torsion, that's a twisted testicle and that can result in permanent damage and even loss of the testicle if it's not uh, dealt with quickly. So if you're watching this video uh, and it came on very quick, the pain, and it is very, very painful and your testicle is even a little bit discolored, then don't stop watching this video now. Don't wait and go straight to uh, the emergency department to have uh, it looked at because it may need to be untwisted in order to correct blood supply, supply to the brain. Now, uh, torsion uh, of the testicle can happen uh, and usually happens at a very um, early age, sometimes even around birth or before, um, but it is uh, can in theory happen at any age as well. And so if it's happened very, very suddenly and is extremely painful, uh, you need medical attention uh, straight away, don't wait. If it's happened gradually, um, and is a bit more what's called an insidious onset, uh, then it could very well be epididymal orchitis, which still needs prompt medical assessment. So don't delay, uh, uh, phone up your family doctor, your sexual health centre, your urologist, or if it's very, very painful and happening when these places are closed, uh, your A&E department. Uh, so what happens if you do nothing? You decide, oh, well, it's epididymal orchitis. Uh, probably I'm just going to leave it because I can't be bothered to see the doctor. Well, um, the longer you leave it, uh, the more swelling it will become, the more painful it will become. Um, untreated infections can uh, result to uh, the pain staying for even longer, the swelling staying, staying for even longer, uh, which will eventually hinder maybe even the way you walk. If you do sports, you'll probably have to do them because of the pain. It can also increase your um, chances of infertility and a very rare cause is a testicular loss as well. So who gets it? Well, as I said before, usually um, 30, 35 um, or under that age uh, usually get it. And a lot of the time it can be a sexually transmitted infection. But if you're, you know, 
22 and you're watching this and you've got pain in the testicle and you think it might be a digital orchitis because it's tender to touch and is a little bit swollen, it doesn't necessarily mean it is a sexually transmitted infection. It's just more likely to be a sexually transmitted infection um, because people under the age of 35 are still trying to find relationships and having uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, individual sexual relationships uh, with many different partners. Over the age of 35, people tend to be a bit more settled or tend to be in a bit more stable relationships, but you can get edema orchitis even in a long-term stable relationship. It's got nothing to do with uh, fidelity. It's just the bacteria has got into the wrong place at the wrong time. It could be if you do oral sex, bacteria from the mouth. It could simply be bacteria from the skin of the thigh just uh, getting into the wrong place at the wrong time. And of course, if you have unprotected anal sex, it could be uh, bacteria uh, from the bowels or the gut, if you like. There are also non-infective uh, causes, uh, everything from um, uh, drug uh, reactions uh, to uh, small diseases, which I've listed here. So um, arterial Mendoza uh, is a rare one and familial Mediterranean fever. Uh, that's a very, very rare disease. Beschitz disease is also uh, quite rare as well. Um, so I'm not going to dwell on these, or let alone the uh, slight reaction of amiodarone. Uh, these are very, very rare things. And so if you think you have epidural orchitis, book in with the GP, book in with the sexual health centre, uh, or if you're in a country which doesn't have these, you book in with a urologist to get, to get it formally reviewed. Um, so the signs generally are a rapid onset of pain and swelling, uh, usually in one, but it can be in both the testicles as well. And some men also uh, experience discharge, and you may also have symptoms of fever, dysuria, um, uh, frequency, and these are, are, are generally uh, symptoms of a urinary tract uh, infection. Um, and you can feel generally quite unwell with it as well. So, uh, see how you go. Um, if you're getting any of these signs, and it's and what I've said here is seems like uh, the signs and symptoms of epidural uh, then you must uh, see uh, or get medical attention uh, very soon. Don't uh, delay. The test for epidural crisis is it's a clinical diagnosis, and so uh, a doctor will first take a very detailed history, and they will take a very detailed sexual history as well to find out how many uh, people you've had sex with, what type of sex you have, um, uh, whether you use condoms, and uh, you know, how you have sex, and all this kinds of stuff. You'll then be examined, and the exam can be um, uh, feeling around your neck and head, but of course, uh, but he's he or she should also examine uh, your groin to see if your lymph nodes are raised, uh, examine each testicle individually, uh, and also examine the penis. And if you have a foreskin, you'll be asked to pull back that um, penis, and then a little sample will be taken from inside the penis. It is not painful. Uh, it's a very, very simple uh, procedure. Uh, it's a little bit uncomfortable sometimes, but it's nothing to be worried about. Um, you may also get uh, a blood test as well. Uh, the blood test uh, you should definitely get will be for HIV and syphilis, especially if it's a sexual health unit, but you also may get a general blood test for checking for general infection. So a uh, blood test for a full blood count, CRP, ESR. Um, that sample from the tip of the penis will be for uh, microscopy to see if there's any pus cells on it. Uh, you'll be asked to produce a urine sample. They'll do a urine dip and also send it off to the lab as well. Uh, you will also be treated immediately um, at that visit if they believe it is epididymal orchitis and you'll be given uh, some antibiotics and we'll come on to the antibiotics uh, later. If there's any worry or concern, uh, you may also be given an ultrasound scan uh, and uh, you may actually be sent to a and &E, uh, which is accident emergency or just or the emergency department, depending on what country you're in, uh, to be seen by a urolo the urologist on call if there's any indication that they think it may be a torsion of the testicle. Um, uh, so, uh, what is the treatment? Uh, well, the treatments are uh, usually um, antibiotics, and that can be an injection or a tablet, and we'll come on to that uh, later. Uh, you must not have any sex until you and your partner or partners have completed 
their treatment. Not halfway through treatment, you have to complete treatment. And really, you should have ideally resolved all your signs and symptoms. So the swelling and pain should have really gone before you start having uh, sex. You will be asked to wear a scrotal support, for example, briefs, something that lifts uh, the testicles. The reason for that is, is uh, think of a testicle on a golf ball. Uh, is, is like a golf ball and is suspending on an elastic band. The elastic band can get very, very tired. And so you need to lift the golf ball up uh, to enable the elastic band to get a little bit more um, uh, rest, if you like. Uh, and that is the whole point of a scrotal support. So if you're wearing boxes, they don't cut it. Really tight jeans, they don't, are not going to go. They're just going to squash everything and they're going to be quite painful. And so you need some kind of briefs, something that lifts up the testicles to support the testicles and takes the weight off, off the spermatocord. You may be asked to use uh, painkillers as well. Uh, for example, paracetamol. <clears throat> you can use a heavier painkiller like ibuprofen. Um, but please be aware that uh, if you know you've got not great kidneys, you shouldn't be taking ibuprofen anyway. Uh, if after uh, three days there is absolutely no improvement of any kind, uh, you may need to phone up um, uh, the sexual health centre or your GP and ask to see if there is a particular type of, see if you need to have a, a formal uh, review. Um, it is very important to realise as well um, that the swelling and pain may not fully resolve until around about three months uh, later because it takes uh, time for this to get uh, better unfortunately. So, what are the antibiotics? So the first line treatment for epididymal kysis is uh, an IM injection of keftriaxone and usually goes in the butt and a course of doxycycline 100 milligrams twice a day for 14 days. Now, depending on your hospital, depending on where you are on this planet, uh, the resistances um, to certain antibiotics, the antibiotics may not be exactly like this and may actually change. But the general standard course of antibiotics is, is uh, an IM injection of keftriaxone, one gram, and doxycycline twice a day for 14 days. Um, now, if they think it could be um, an enteric or a bowel organism as well, you may have ofloxacin added in. Um, and sometimes if they just enteric organism, it may be um, ofloxacin or levofloxacin. And also, if it's uh, a mycoplasma um, type kind of organism, you may give an uh, moxifloxacin. And it's very important as well to tell your uh, doctor if you have if you're allergic to anything as well. You should be asked, but just in case. So every antibiotic has side effects. The good side effect of antibiotics is that it kills off bacteria. That's a good thing we want. Uh, but sometimes you have uh, bad side effects. Now, near enough, all antibiotics cause gastrointestinal disturbances. Uh, what does that mean? Nausea, sometimes even vomiting, sometimes diarrhea, sometimes stomach cramps, sometimes just a general feeling of a bit queasiness and uh, not feeling very well. That's not an allergic reaction, that's just a side effect of this type of um, chemical therapy, which is, uh, is quite heavy. Um, uh, a lot of them can also infect uh, the liver as well. So if you've got a dodgy liver, you need to tell the uh, doctor that to see if it's okay. And doxycycline, uh, ofloxacin and levofloxacin uh, can also have a um, reaction to the skin. And so in the summer months or on sunny days, you need to make sure that your skin is not in direct contact with the, scum, sorry, with the sun. Uh, it doesn't leave a uniform tan, I've seen that on the internet, it leaves a permanent blotchy staining of the skin uh, which uh, doesn't look great and unfortunately is permanent. So keep your skin away from the sun and that includes sunbeds uh, if you're taking uh, doxycycline, ofloxacin or levofloxacin. Okay? And also um, there's a small chance of tendinitis or tendon rupture on ofloxacin or levofloxacin. So if you do lots of sports, like you're a gymnast or something, um, or you do some other kind of uh, activity where lo lots of jumping up and down, uh, then uh, stop the exercise and uh, take the antibiotic. Uh, and then after a few weeks, after you finish the antibiotic, you slowly reintroduce uh, the exercise, okay? Um, in terms of your partner, uh, your partners do need to be treated before you have sex with them again. Uh, and so usually your partner's in the last uh, four weeks or so, sometimes a little bit longer, depending on your sexual history. And your partners should have a full sexual health screen, HIV, syphilis, uh, chlamydia and gonorrhea, and obviously the same or similar antibiotic uh, you've had as well. 
uh, other information you need to know um, again we've talked about no sex until you've completed um, um, uh, your antibiotics and uh, it's important to realise that if uh, the cause of your uh, epidermal orchitis is related to um, uh, uh, uropathogen, and so the uropathogens, for example, uh, E. coli, for example, or Proteus, uh, then uh, men should be referred to urology uh, for a full workup because they may need uh, an ultrasound uh, of the prostate, ultrasound of the bladder, and possibly uh, and a cystoscopy as well, depending on what the urologist deems necessary, because men shouldn't really get urinary tract infections. Another thing I'm getting asked on quite a lot on this channel is about uh, uroplasia. Um, and if it's found in men with epidemic orchitis, should it be treated? As a general rule, it shouldn't be, because if you've got something like chlamydia or gonorrhea, you'll be given a course of antibiotics and uroplasia will be cleared with those antibiotics anyway. It's quite sensitive to doxycycline. Um, however, um, if there's no cause um, to an epidermal and the only thing that can be found is uroplasia, and then it will be treated or should be treated with doxycycline. The fact is that if you have symptoms anyway, um, then you'll be treated regardless. And so if you don't have symptoms, why on earth are you getting a test for uroplasia? Uh, <laughs> and so it's a bit of a catch-22. So if you've got no symptoms at all and your doctor's tested you for uroplasia, well, that's a normal commensal that's found in many, many people and doesn't really cause anything. If you have symptoms of epididymal orchitis, yes, you should have a sexual health screen and you'll be given a course of antibiotics. And those antibiotics, for example, doxycycline, should automatically treat the uroplasia. Uh, so uh, occasionally we get uh, individuals who their doctors from lands far away from the UK have just for some reason tested for uroplasia. The reason why private doctors do this is because it's a bit of a money earner. If the test comes up positive, oh, you've got uroplasia, we need to, we need to treat that. So you have, the patient has to spend more money, despite the fact they've got no symptoms whatsoever. So the only thing you really want to be concerned about is making sure you don't have gonorrhea, you don't have chlamydia. If you've got pain or symptoms of um, epidemic orchitis, you don't have mycoplasma genitalium and you should be tested for HIV and syphilis. They're the five infections you should ideally be tested for uh, uh, if you've got pain. If you've got no pain, you don't need to test for mycoplasma genitalium. So here's some of the great websites I've used and a lot of this information is based uh, as well as on the uh, British um, Association of Sexual Health and HIV. It's also based on some of the guidelines from uh, other areas of this planet as well. Um, but I've left the uh, web address for bash.org uh, for such guidelines because they've got their guidelines in a very nice, easy to find uh, format. Other information I found via uh, PubMed and the references are in the video. So thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please um, share and subscribe for the next uh, YouTube episode. Take care and thank you very much. Goodbye.